بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Dear brothers, sisters in Islam, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. In this program of the parables of the Quran, we are going to take two parables from سورة النحل in verse number seventy-five and seventy-six. Both parables uh, speak about the similitude of a believer and a non-believer. Are they equal? That is the main subject. So let us take uh, the verse first. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ضرب الله مثلا عبدا مملوكا لا يقدر على شيء ومن رزقناه منا رزقا حسنا فهو ينفق منه سرا وجهرا هل يستوون الحمد لله بل أكثرهم لا يعلمون الله sets forth the parable of two men one a slave under the dominion of another he has no power of any sort and the other a man on whom we have bestowed goodly favors from ourselves and he spends thereof freely, privately and publicly. Are both them are equal? By no means. Praise be to Allah, but most of them understand not. And the next ayah, which is very similar to this one, وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلَ الرَّجُلَيْنِ أَحَدُهُمَا أَبْكَمُ لَا يَقْدُنُ عَلَى شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ كَلٌ عَلَى مَوْلَاهُ أينما يوجه لا يأتي بخير هل يستوي هو ومن يأمر بالعدل وهو على سرات مستقيم. الله sets forth another parable of two men. One of them dumb with no power of any sort. A huge burden is he to his master. Whichever way he directs him, he brings no good. Is such. A man equal with one who commands justice and is on a straight way. Now these uh, these are the two parables. In the first parable, the comparison is made between a slave, la yakduru ala shay, who got uh, no power at all, or who can't do anything with his own will because he has to carry out what his master wants him to carry out. So, he is not independent, he is not free, he is just uh, under his master. Now, this man, could he be compared with another person to whom we have given a lot of sustenance? We have given him wealth, for example. And this person is spending of that money secretly and publicly. And he, that person got the full control of his wealth. He does not need the permission of his master to spend out of it. He spends by his own will. So, do you think, hal yastavun, they would be equal? And that is the example of whom? The believer and the non-believer. The believer is that person who is given that sustenance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is spending out of... Uh, out of his own will publicly and also secretly. Here, let me say that uh, as far as spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is concerned, it is always said that sincerity demands that whenever you spend, don't show off. And this is why in that uh, hadith that seven types of people would have the shade of Allah under the throne of Allah the day there would be no other shade except the shade of the throne of Allah. And among those seven categories, 
Who are those people? One person is the one who spends with such secrecy that his left hand does not know what his right hand is spending. So we always know that uh, when you spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you spend it secretly. But sometime, sometime it is needed for you to spend publicly as well to encourage other people. For example, you want to you want money for any good cause. You want to help the poor people. And this is why this is why you have announced among the people in a mosque, for example, you have announced appealing to them to donate. Now here, the person who donates with this niya, with this intention, that uh, once I start, other people are going to follow suit. If that is the intention, then giving in public is also rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That uh, by this doing, you are encouraging other people to spend. So that is the example of the believer. And the example of, uh, of the kafir, of the non-believer in this parable is just like a slave. The slave, that person who is controlled just by his own desires. He does not want to, to spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all. He just follows his own desires and this is why he is labeled as slave, slave of his, of his whims and desires. And uh, in that example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, are they equal? Yes, they are not equal. They are not equal. This is why the ayah ends with this note, Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah, bal aktharuhum la ya'laboon, but most of the people, they don't know this fact. Now coming to the next parable, which is also about the believer and the non-believer. Here in this example, we got comparison between two persons. One is dumb. One is dumb, can't express himself at all. لا يقدر على شيء And then he is not able to do anything. وهو كل على مولا He is just a burden, a huge burden upon his master. Because the master has to feed him sustain him still he does not uh, he does not uh, pay him back anything at all and even when he wants to do anything when the master wants him to do anything that person does not do anything good at all this person can he be equal to another person who can express himself, who can uh, do nice things, who is uh, doing justice to the people. And then, وَهُوَ عَلَى سِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ And then he is standing on the right path as well. Are they equal? Of course, they are not equal. We understand that they are not equal. Even a person, uh, any person could uh, make this decision that uh, if you got, even among your children, one is dumb and one got uh, the ability upon all the functions of the life, their activities would be different. Their education would be different. Their field of services would be different as well. They would not be, they would not be equally treated or they would not be understood as equal to each other. Again, this is the example of the believer and the non-believer. Believer in this example is the person who is on the right path, who is uh, doing justice, who is dealing with the people with justice. And then the person himself is standing on, on the right path. And there are other ayat in Al-Quran. For example, أَفَمَنْ كَانَ مُؤْمِنَا كَمَنْ كَانَ فَاسِقَا لَا يستوون. A believer and a fasiq, a sinner, can they be equal? No, they are not equal. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to treat the believer just like a fasiq? Here fasiq means the person who has rejected Allah. Because the word fisq, sometimes it is used even for a believer if he is disobedient or if he is committing a sin. You, you say that this person, for example, the person who is committing adultery or drinking wine 
or doing something else bad, you say that he is fasiq. But also in Al-Quran, we come to understand that the word fasiq is used for a non-believer as well. For example, it is used for Iblis, the Satan. When he did not prostrate to Adam, when he was commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to prostrate to Adam, he did, he did not, it is said, كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَفَصَقَ عَنْ عَمْرِ رَبِّهِ He was from among the jinnis and he came out from the commandments of his Lord. He left the commandments of his Lord. So the word fasaka is not primarily uh, for, uh, for the sin only or for uh, the minor sins, but it is also for the major sins, including infidelity, including shirk as well. In the same way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Hal yastabi alladheena ya'lamoona wa alladheena la ya'lamoon. Those people who got knowledge, can they be equal to those people who got no knowledge at all? Knowledge is going to differentiate between two persons and you, you yourself, in your society. You treat the people because of their knowledge. You employ the people because of your knowledge, their knowledge. If a person, for example, he got any type of skill, and you need that skill, you employ him. You can't employ a person who got no skill at all for a, for a definite type of work. In the same way, in a university, when you want a person to give lecture, don't you see that what type of degrees he got and what type of knowledge he got? Then you employ him. So, in your own life, you differentiate between those people who know and those people who do not know. And this, uh, this shows that there is a great excellence of knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ The first thing you should know, the first thing you should know is, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ There is none to be worshipped except Allah. Yani in the knowledge itself, the knowledge of Tawheed should be the first knowledge which should be attained by, by the people. And when we say, أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ It means, لا معبود بحق إلا الله لا إله none to be worshipped none to be worshipped with all justification except Allah سبحانه وتعالى because he is the only one who deserves all types of worships who deserves all types of devotion from us that is uh, that is the knowledge and with knowledge you acquire faith and with faith insha Allah you deserve all the bounties and favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world and in the hereafter. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.